Hi, everyone. My name is Jessica Payne, and welcome to the Brand Organics podcast. After a brief hiatus, I'm so happy to be back. Uh, and today, I'm actually just going to jump right in. Today's podcast is actually a re-recording of one you probably heard a little bit earlier this year. And it was it's on a, a subject that you've heard me talk about before, how to inspire action on social media. And I'm re-recording this podcast because I've actually been doing quite a few speaking engagements on this very topic. And one of the pieces of feedback that I've received is, hey, Jessica, we love the deep dive. Is there something shorter or more compact that, that I can download or that I can listen to? Because, you know, time, um, it, it's, it's good to review, but I don't have a lot of time. So as someone who runs her own business and um, has a very short attention span and is way too busy for her own good, I am so willing to oblige. The whole reason uh, and the whole premise behind this sort of five-step formula uh, came about based off of two things. People who have used social media or are trying to use social media feel like they don't have any um, gauge of, of whether or not they're spending their time wisely. In fact, they tell me, Jessica, I feel like I'm wasting time. How do I use social media successfully? And the other reason is they feel like maybe they have invested a lot of time, maybe even a lot of money, and they have no results. So they tell me, look, I'm frustrated because I have zero results and I've put all this time and energy into social media. How do I use social media successfully? And that was kind of the premise that started this conversation. So I'd, I kept answering it the same way. And, you know, some folks would get it and some wouldn't. And I went away and I decided, you know, there's got to be an easier way for me to have this conversation in a way that is very easily accessible. So I started to do this research. I actually like, I like mathematics. I like logic. I like steps. I like recipes and lists. And I found that my students did too. So I came up with this five-step formula because, frankly, nothing else existed. And I wanted to make folks understand that there is a process to using social media. A lot of us jump out the gate and, and we fall in love with a certain channel or we, maybe we even get inspired by our competitors or a celebrity. We say, we want that. We can totally get followers, right? We, we should totally be on Instagram and promoting our business to get to get traffic, right? We kind of leapfrog over some very important pieces that I'm going to walk you through today. There's only five of them. And this is based off my 15 years in the industry in communications, public relations, marketing, and digital. So I didn't make this up on a whim. These are literally the pieces that have been instilled in me since day one, since I got my degree in communications, all the way up until now, um, working with clients and brand and digital. And I want, to, I want to highlight a key part of the phrase, how to inspire action on social media. And this goes back to the frustration that I kept hearing from folks. They felt like they were wasting time. They had zero or little results. And it's because when we looked at their situation closely, it's not like they weren't putting all their gusto or creativity or had a really smart team or even had a tremendous amount of marketing experience. They were missing these key steps, and when you add these key steps together, you do uh, you contribute to what is a key objective, and that is actually inspiring action. You'd think it'd be easiest for, for us to remember that we need to put a purpose behind using social media, but that's where a lot of businesses fail. They fail to actually spend time thinking about the strategy that goes behind uh, what they do, because at the end of the day, they want to accomplish something. It's sort of like I tell uh, I, I tell my workshops. Uh, it, it's kind of like you're given the keys to a car, and it could be a beautiful car, it could be expensive car, but if you're not taught the steps in terms of how to turn the car on or drive it, it's kind of a useless tool. You could spend a tremendous amount of money and energy buying the perfect car, getting it repainted, getting the subwoofer, getting all that high performance gear. But if you don't know how to drive it, if you literally don't know the steps of putting the key in the ignition or you know how to accelerate, you're basically left with this kind of very expensive or kind of even risky um, object that you're supposed to know and master. Okay, so that's, that's the long and short of it. Think about every time you want to make something happen. A couple things have to take place for you to accomplish that goal, right? 
you have to visualize it. You have to set a goal. You have to, chances are you have to follow a certain number of steps or have a combination of things working together for you to reach that goal, right? And then at the end, you kind of assess it to make sure you, you reach that goal. Well, the same thing goes with social media, inspiring impact, inspiring action. So what I've put together are five, you can call them ingredients, that when combined, actually put purpose behind how you use Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and it allows you to kind of like forget about what everyone else is doing. But if you're curious and you want to see how brands are successful on social media, it's because they're doing all five of these ingredients. They're including all five of these ingredients in their thought process behind social. So the first one is own your authenticity. Authenticity is very much a buzzword right now, but I want you to come with me on this journey and realize that it's not just about telling the truth. Right now, consumers, frankly, demand, especially on places like uh, social media, that brands, your organization, your business, whether it's a for-profit or non-profit, appear a certain way. And it has to do with this whole thing wrapped around called trust. We're more likely to buy or donate our time and money to brands or organizations that we trust. What builds that trust? Well, as humans, we're designed to trust other organizations or brands that resemble our own life, our own culture, right? As humans, we're designed to uh, gather around other people that look like us or think like us, who have a shared experience, or maybe um, we can trust to help us overcome a challenge or an issue. That's why you might like Disney over Sony, or you might choose to, um, you know, buy from Blue Apron versus Amazon for food, for example. You like the brand, you trust the brand, you feel like they're part of a, a lifestyle. They've earned your trust. If statistics speak more powerfully to you, I've got a great one for you. 91% of customers want brands they follow to be authentic in their social media posts. 91%. I love that stat. It's beautiful. It's from Bonfire Marketing. And it just speaks to the power of authenticity. Look, today's consumer, you have to appear warm, transparent, unique. Um, and it doesn't mean you have to create the wheel or, or, or sound, you know, sound like a scholar. It, it, you know, you can sell insurance or you can uh, be, you know, saving the world from a water shortage or somewhere in between. Or you could be Amazon. But to be successful on social media, to get engagement, to capture that attention, you have to appear authentic. And I don't even say appear, you have to be authentic. So having a unique sense of self, and that comes from owning your story. Why are you here? No, and I tell people, no, why are you really here? Not to sell sneakers or to sell soda or, or to, to, to get donors or get people to come to your event. That's, that might be your objective, but what is your brand purpose? What is your brand identity? Is it to bring music to inner cities? Is it to increase education for children? You know, is it to empower women? What is it? What is your social proof? And that starts with the first ingredient, which is owning your authenticity. And let me tell you this, once you understand who you are, writing social media content becomes so much easier because you're no longer trying to be someone else. And that is a huge hang up, a big frustration I get from clients. So the first step, own your authenticity. The second step or second ingredient is simplify your story. And the easiest way to, to, to kind of present this to you is think about the last time you were watching Netflix or maybe even on on your smartphone. Chances are you were probably multitasking, right? Maybe you were helping one of your kids with their homework. Maybe you were trying to take a business call. You had something on pause. Or if you're like me, you're, you're binge watching your favorite shows on Netflix and you're just thumbing through Twitter. It's something I actually love to do um, during breaking news or like if there's an award ceremony that's on, I'm on Twitter trying to refresh the hashtags while trying to watch TV at the same time. It's weird. It's, it's crazy. But that actually is one of my favorite things to do to wind down. It's weird. You'd think I would actually do just choose one thing. But I love just to kind of veg and, and, and watch TV and multitask. Well, here's the thing. If you think about today's preferred, um, the way humans prefer to use technology, more people have a smartphone than ever. More people 
have a fragmented attention span than ever, and more people actually prefer to multitask. So think about that fragmented attention span you have. You know, a friend of mine told me the other day, um, she has uh, millennial uh, children. So folks, you know, kids really just graduating college and then their younger siblings. And she said, if, if you can't get your message across under one thumb scroll on a smartphone, you've lost them. And that's true. Um, If you think about, you know, another thing, stats, Uh, if you advertise on Facebook, uh, mobile ads perform almost like 80%, above 80%, whereas desktop ads don't perform. It's because people are on their smartphones. So my whole reason for this and simplifying your story is you have to think, um, yes, keeping your character count to 140 characters or less or whatever on Twitter matters, um, but you also have to think of a few things. We have a shortened attention span. You want to communicate in a few sentences or less. And imagery or video tends to engage um, exponentially more. So when you're talking about bringing your story forward, you have to think in a way that you just are competing with, um, you're competing with folks who just do not have a a great attention span. So if you're trying to get a new customer or even rally uh, the attention of a current customer, you have to keep your story crystal clear. Here's a great stat. Uh, mobile offers or, or coupons or deals offered via a mobile device, via an ad or something you see on a smartphone, they convert at 10 times more frequently than print offers, right? That's because we're all on our smartphone. So when in doubt, I always tell people, when you're writing social media content or you're building a website, build it for a smartphone. And if it's mobile friendly, then you're on the right track. So the third ingredient is to connect through emotion. And you don't have to create emotional posts. You don't have to make people cry or even belly laugh. You know, if you're insurance, you're going to be tapping into other emotions, uh, you know, than, than folks who are into maybe cosmetics, right? If you're in insurance, it's stuff about security, uh, peace of mind, versus if you're cosmetics, you're going to be talking, you know, everything from beauty to empowerment to independence, right? You're going to be tapping into these emotions, these aspirational emotions that people um, will be looking for. When, again, it, 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 it creates an affinity for your brand. It creates that trust. You know, studies have shown that if you uh, tap into positive emotions like awe, surprise, delight, or even humor, that actually engages more on social media than fear or negative And that's why you're seeing a lot of new brands, especially those tapping into younger demographics, are building up that aspirational, positive, empowering one. I love that personally because I'm so tired of the fear-based marketing and the negative paradigm, but it's beautiful because younger consumers are just saying, look, you don't need to scare me to get my attention. In fact, that's going to put me off. But if you can improve my life and empower me, you've got my attention. So the fourth step or fourth ingredient is inspire action. And in a way, this is almost your your most important step out of everything. You want to inspire action through a call to action. And I always tell folks, as independent as we humans like to think we are, we have to be told what to do, especially on places like social media. Calls to action are things like subscribe, visit my website, um, click to donate. You know, for more information, visit www. yada yada yada. So, a call to action is literally the direction that you're giving your followers via your social media posts, so that they actually click through or do exactly what you want them to do. So, including a call to action will actually increase your click through rate. So when people actually click through, click on your post, click through to your post to your website, you know, the golden path that leads people to actually go where you want them to go, it's typically a website, it will increase by 285% on Facebook if you include a a click through, uh, a, a call to action, 285%. That source is from AdRoll. It's, it's one of my favorites. It's like, We all know we should include a call to action, yet I see even big brands forget to do it. You spend all this time telling your story, simplifying it, connecting through emotion, using powerful imagery, maybe even have an amazing video, and then you forget to tell people what it is you want them to do. You know, a call to action doesn't always have to be click 
through or, or subscribe, it can be leave a comment, or tag a friend, you know, get them to actually do something and you will see that engagement increase. And I, I want to spend a little bit of time on this because engagement is always you know, typically tends to be a big objective for brands on social media. You have to have that social proof. You have to show that you actually are alive and engaged, right? So my tip to you is the fourth ingredient include a call to action. And again, this is actually going to increase your your the probability of you inspiring whatever action you want them to take on social media exponentially. On Facebook, up to 285%. All right, so step five, the last uh, ingredient, and then I'll kind of tie it up for you here. And again, if you have your cheat sheet open, you'll find I'm tracking right to this. So what you can actually do is take notes, print it out and actually take notes or, or write it out, whatever helps you and your team. Step five, or the fifth ingredient, is, is measure impact. You'd be surprised at how many people just sort of set it and forget it. People don't always discover your content out, out the gate on the first go. In fact, sometimes you can experience um, even greater engagement in like sort of these supplementary, these secondary waves as people discover your, con your content, then they share it, and then like, you know, the awareness and the engagement increases exponentially, well, s your engagement can too. And it it's, it's a huge opportunity because I've spoken to clients who, you know, the first time they bring me in, they want me to do a social media audit. So I'm looking at their channels, and I'll be like, did you notice that two weeks after your promotion, you peaked again? But, but from our conversations, you never went back and, and kind of took advantage of this audience. And the look on their face is somewhere between embarrassment and shock um, and frustration. So, so this data is, was here. And the beautiful thing about social media, especially on places like Facebook, you can pretty much track, and Google Analytics, you can track analytics almost in real time, which is fantastic. Um, Zuckerberg and his team have made tracking analytics on social media uh, not only... Um, kind of powerful and, and easy to interpret, but you can act on them. And that's really powerful for a brand. So your fifth step, uh, your fifth ingredient is measure your impact. And as I like to say, assess, adjust, and accelerate. Because I don't want you to lose those golden opportunities to, um, to take advantage of all this steam, all this momentum, all this hard work that you've put in, uh, because you could be missing out on sales or donations or, or, or anything. So so that should wrap it up. How to inspire action on social media. Keep this recording handy. Keep the ebook handy. Print it out. Give it to your team. And I guarantee you, you're going to be witnessing sort of two things happen very, very quickly. Um, you're going to be more efficient on social media. You're not going to feel like you're wasting time anymore. In fact, all of the time that you put behind social media is going to be more strategic because you're automatically approaching it in a way that is designed to inspire action, to inspire an outcome. It's the same strategy I use for my business and I use for my clients. Okay? And the second thing is you're going to start to see results, which is what we're after at the end of the day, right? Thank you so much for listening, everyone. Again, this was a companion piece to a new cheat sheet I've put out called How to Inspire Action on Social Media in Five Simple Steps. So don't forget, I'm actually going to link to where you can download that cheat sheet for free. So thank you so much for listening again. This was the Brand Organics Podcast. If you have any questions for me uh, about the show or about the cheat sheet, you can always reach me at my website, which is jessicapayne.us. You can also find me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So have a great week, everyone, and I'll see you next time.
podcast you just heard was recorded with Anchor. If you want to make your own, download the Android or iOS app completely free from anchor.fm slash podcast. That's anchor.fm slash podcast.